Hi, this is Brian Smith. Today is video number eight in my daily Linux video series, and it's Tuesday, March 3rd, and today we're going to cover the basics of BusyBox. BusyBox is a very handy utility, and basically what it does is it combines um, one or more basic uh, Linux commands into a single BusyBox executable. And these commands are usually um, very small in nature, and BusyBox itself is very small. And so you basically combine the functionality of many um, of the common Linux command line utilities into a single small executable. And that's why it's used a lot in embedded um, systems um, running Linux. It's also used in more mainstream distributions like Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu as well. And it's mainly used during um, like the initRD um, process when the system's booting up to get everything uh, loaded up before the full system's up and running. So, um, for example, on this Ubuntu um, computer mod right now, we have um, BusyBox. And if you just run BusyBox without any parameters and press enter, if you sc I'll scroll up to the top here, and what you'll see is it'll show the version number of BusyBox. And then down here, it'll show what functions or applets are defined within this BusyBox. So basically, all of these commands here are included in this specific busy box on this Ubuntu computer. So you can see all the commands here. Now, this brings up a good point. Not all busy box executables are created equally. When you compile busy box, you can select what applets or what functionality are included. So you could potentially make a busy box um, executable that only contained one single command. Like for example, you know, unzip or uptime. You could create a BusyBox executable that only contain that one applet. And let me show you, um, th this is what it looks like here when you're doing the configuration for BusyBox before you compile it. And so you can go in here on, on any of these options and enable or disable these features, like if you want to have set or vi or patch, ed, you can go in here and enable and da disable these. And then when you build um, BusyBox, It'll be custom built to only include just what you wanted. And this is a great way to control the size of BusyBox. If there's some utilities you know you're not going to need, you can go in here and exclude them um, from the list so that they're not um, compiled into your BusyBox executable. So once you've selected um, what you want your BusyBox to contain and, and compile it, or if you get a BusyBox executable that's compiled by somebody else, um, like I said, the first thing you want to do is you run BusyBox by itself. That'll show you the version number and then all the applets here. And if you want to use one of these applets, you can do um, two different things. You can either run BusyBox and then put the applet name, like for example, VI. So if we put BusyBox VI and press enter, now we're in the BusyBox VI applet, which is a basically a, a basic um, version of VI with the with just the basic functionality. The other way you can do it is if you create a symbolic link or a, a, a hard link um, back to the BusyBox with the name of the applet, when you run the link and it points to BusyBox, it'll automatically load that applet. For example, if I do ln minus s to create a symbolic link, and what we're going to do is create a, a link called vi um, pointed to BusyBox. We do an ls here. So you can see vi is a link to BusyBox. So if I run dot slash vi, and I'll just do minus minus help, you can see this was going to call up the BusyBox version of vi, and these are the uh, the parameters it accepts. So if we take off the help and just run dot slash vi here, we're into the BusyBox version of vi. So so the basic two ways you can run BusyBox commands are either create links links with the the applet name to BusyBox or just run BusyBox and then the applet name. Alright, so let's take a closer look at a, at a couple of applets and, and just show kind of a real example of the power of BusyBox. So, one of the applets listed here in this um, Ubuntu version of um, BusyBox is the HTTP HTTP BPD server. Sorry about that. And what that is is a, a basic web server. Um, and so what we're going to do, you can see it right here, is we're going to run busybox httpd. And if we do a minus minus help, it'll show 
you know the different options we can we can specify by default um, the directory that it's going to serve up as the root of your web server will be the current directory so we'll just run it like that oh I think I already had it running let me let me kill it here real quick all right let's start over here all right so we'll do a busy box httpd okay and what that's going to do is start the uh, busy box web server in the background Okay, and there it is. And then what we're going to do is we'll do a busybox vi um, index.html. So this is going to run the busybox vi applet and we'll edit the index.html file. And we'll just create a really um, basic HTML file here. We'll say hello from busybox. Oops. All right. All right. So now we have our basic in index.html. We have busybox um, httpd running in the background there. So now we'll bring up a uh, a web browser here, and we will go to there's a local host here, and you can see there it is the um, web page that we created. Um, with the busybox vi, the index.html, served up by the busybox httpd web server. So as you can see, busybox is a uh, a pretty handy command, and it can also come in in handy for like say you're on a um, a server and it doesn't have like the telnet command installed on the server, and you just need to like test if a port's open or something. Well, rather than installing the RPM that provides Telnet, or the um, the you know the package that provides Telnet, you can if you have BusyBox on here, you can run BusyBox, see if it includes like the Telnet applet, and if it does, you could just use this, you know, just do a BusyBox Telnet rather than going through the hassle of, of installing the RPM that provides the full you know Telnet command. And what you'll find is there's a lot of commands included with a lot of BusyBoxes that aren't included. Um, on the system that you're on. For example, like the web server I was just on, you know, a lot of times you won't have access to a web server, but if you need to do something really, you know, like a temporary quick uh, test or, or a quick test website, you could just use BusyBox to, to do that rather than installing like a full-fledged um, web server. So I hope you found this video uh, useful. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a, a great day today, and we'll be back tomorrow with a, another video.